Hi, this is part three of my private server tutorial, and today, as promised in the last video, I'm going to explain how Consta-G and all the stuff inside of it works. So, this may look kind of like a big complicated mess because there's all these, like, cluttered up numbers and whatnot, but it's actually kind of simple once you... God, my mouse is like... For some reason, my mouse is acting weird, so, uh... Keep that in mind when you see it like twitching all over the place and going where it doesn't need to be. Um, it's actually a lot simpler once you figure out what each individual stat number does. So the note here corresponds directly with it corresponds directly with the numbers that are in these stats. So 18 for basic is reload, and yeah, 1.4 times the standard recoil of a gun for a basic. These five up here are what I call bases. So, every single tank in the game has these, has one of these five attached to it. And that's so the... And that's so it actually works as intended, because without one of those, it probably is going to have, like, a stupid fire rate in some... It's either going to be really weak or unnecessarily strong. Which, I tested this in a slightly earlier iteration of this recording that got deleted, because I opened a calculator window and, like, I... I didn't minimize the tab, but I, like, took it out of the full screen mode. Oh, God, there's already a sentry right there. Uh, I took it this tab out of full screen mode, and it made the, uh, for whatever reason, it made the recording stop working. I think Windows 10 has a similar issue. I probably didn't even need to upgrade my stats at all, but this is with g.blank attached to nothing else. Let me actually... Not up here. See, it just has g.blank in the combined stats section. So when you add it, it gives you stupid amounts of recoil and a ton of damage. Oh my god. Keep in mind, legacy era sentries are, like, like super buffed. Like, stupid amounts of health, a lot of damage and whatnot. So, that alone should say something about how powerful this tank is. And imagine some of you nutbags out there are probably going to actually throw something together that's literally this with a different look or something. That's fine, you do you. Whatever you want to throw together, it's your server. I'm just saying that if you intend for it to be like a community thing, where you're welcoming other, people's in, other people into it as you please, they're not going to like having such an unbalanced mess. So let's go back to const g. You'll notice a lot of these things here are decimal values, and that's because they multiply what's up here into... They multiply whatever's up here by these values. So, for example, if you have an overseer tank, which would have g.drone, uh, and then it's probably in here somewhere... Yeah, over. So, all overseers and overlords and whatnot have g.over on them. So this fire is 1.5 times slower. You want to keep that in mind. Higher values for reload make them fire slower because it's talking about the delay between fire rate. It's talking about the delay between the firing rather than the speed in which it fires. The recoil, shutter, health, damage, pen, speed, all that stuff. Now because they... I'm pretty sure all the stats that are intended to be for drones... Yeah, range is still at 1. It's because, since drones don't have the diet range thing enabled, I'll talk about that eventually. Not in this episode, but eventually. Uh, <clears throat> because they don't die after a certain point in time, they, there's no point in modifying the range, so they just don't. But, uh... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to say for... 
this example. Actually, let me show you. So over here, if I get rid of G dot over on this gun, on this gun right here, which I want to point this out, I did figure out which which way these things move when you turn them. Positive values actually point them. If the tank is facing to the right, the positive values are going to turn it so it's facing downward. So you want negative values to... You want negative values or just really high values, for example, 270. Oh my god. If you want the, uh... If you want the thing to work as intended, or whatever, it's up to you, it's your idea. So you'll see here, I'm just going to throw together a build, uh, they do not fire in sync. Another thing, G dot over I think has like slightly, one of these, I think G dot over has like larger drones or something, just ever so slightly. As for speed, I, uh, I think the larger ones are a bit faster actually. Yeah, they're much faster. So you can tell the difference. And that's what this combined stats function does, really. It it multiplies these in order. So it'll be g dot drone times g dot over times anything else you put there. And then I might as well talk about like because I don't want this to be like a really short video. I might as well talk about like the property section as well. So, shoot settings, that's where the combined stats thing is. We literally just went over that. Type, this is the kind of projectile it fires. So, you can get kind of stupid with this, but just make sure that whatever you set for type is defined before it. If you have something like, uh, well, let me see what's actually down here. If you do, like, exports.engineer or something like that or something like that it's not going to work because the engineer hasn't been defined yet so where are we minigun sprayer machine gun factory spawner under here Over Trapper, over Lord, over Seer. Here we go. Okay. Auto fire is kind of self-explanatory. It fires automatically. Sync skills. This is important for drone tanks because it means whenever you upgrade your points in the stats in the corner, the drones will automatically modify themselves to be affected by those stats. So if I turn if I turn these off by just making them like a just a note. So if I just let some of these spawn and then I increase the drone speed, you'll notice that the new ones are a lot faster, and that's because they aren't, and that's because the old ones haven't been updated, because they don't have sync skills enabled. Stat calculator, I'm not entirely sure what that does. It's, I think there, I think something kind of explains what that does. Uh, I don't know. It's it's out there somewhere. You'll probably be able to find it. Uh, you've been able to make private servers for years now, so it's... I don't know. I do know that not very many people have made, like, a YouTube series like I'm doing. There's one other guy I'm aware of, and that's about it. Anyways, uh, wait to cycle. This is important also if you're trying to prevent things like stacking, which happens with predators and hunters and stuff. Or for things like things like these, where you want them to actually... where they don't just respawn the instant the projectile is killed. So when wait to cycle is turned on, it, has to, it will only fire 
during that, uh, well, once its reload cycle has hit. So, which, I, that's, that could have been worded better. Uh, basically, it only fires whenever its reload timer is up, and only then. So, uh, if I turn these off... See, if one of these drones dies... Wait, what? What the heck? Uh... All right, let me just wait till the... So you see, I, I kind of desynchronized it there. And that's, that's because wait to cycle is disabled. And, uh, what else is... There's a few other things that people have attached to... Yeah, Max Children. This is uh, different from the Max Children line that's up here, for example, in the Overlord's definition. This is the absolute maximum amount of projectiles a tank can spawn at one time. If it's applied to... Well, that's if it's applied, like, up here or something like that. Anywhere that's outside of a square bracket, inside of, like, guns and stuff like that. If you do max children inside a gun, that's the maximum amount of projectiles a, a gun can spawn. And this has all the this has all the same stuff. G dot met is another modifier thing that I'm not sure exactly what it does. Uh, turrets. I'll get into this later. I'm not sure why this is doing that, but okay. I'll deal with that later. Mm, Overgunner. You can get rid of this function. The tank, none of the tanks use it. Oh. Oh right. Yeah, no one uses that stuff. Uh, only think your cruisers. Facing types. These are... They're not absolutely necessary for anything, but uh, there's multiple types. So locks facing means that whenever the shift key is held down, or whenever you have... Whenever you're right-clicking, which is referred to as alt-fire... Uh, it, it just sticks the tank so it's facing in that direction. Well... Will the projectiles still go wherever wherever your mouse is? Not much else I can say there. Uh, turn with speed. It's that's self-explanatory. It it turns with its speed. <laughs> all the all the things like rocks and polygons have that. Two target is the standard one. So that's with all the tanks like. Uh, well, that's with all the tanks, because they face exactly towards the mouse, which is your target, basically. Um... I think there is also, like, smooth with motion, or, like, smooth to target or something. I'll do smooth with, with motion. If I do this... It won't face towards the tar towards your target instantly. It just it like eases its way over there. Like, let me show you here. What? Oh my god. Hmm. hmm maybe it's. I don't know. Okay. Well, I guess bad example, but. You get the idea, it like eases its way over there. I think the... Really? Turrets don't have that? Hmm. 
Well, uh, shoot then. Okay. Auto spin. That's that's literally what happens if you press the C key, except you just can't turn it off. Things like auto three, auto four, auto five. They all have that. Then there's motion types, which it's important not to get the two confused because if you if you do it kind of messes the whole thing up. Motor is used for uh, blocks, pillboxes, tanks, like that, and stuff like that. Not exactly sure. Uh, not, ex not exactly what sh what difference it makes if it has like motor or just doesn't have a motion type at all. Then we have glide, which is used for traps. They, like, just standard traps, not the things that... So that means they just, like, decelerate from their current momentum and... Yeah, like that. <laughs> um, I could probably be explaining these a bit better, but... You probably get the idea. If it's not exactly what I'm saying, it's... You're probably in the ballpark and you'll figure it out soon. We have Chase, which is used for swarm drones. Yeah, motion type Chase. Yeah, so this is an example. Facing type smooth to target. And motion type Chase. And then we have motion type swarm, which is obviously for swarm drones. I don't know what else to say there. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can I should cover on this episode that kind of fits the general idea of what's going on. Persists after death is uh, I might as well talk about this. You can modify the definition of a of a like a projectile or something just temporarily for that for that specific gun. So, if you put something like this, it will change that trait exclusively for the gun. Meaning, in this case, it's put inside brackets, given a comma, and then in curved brackets, it'll have another trait or another few traits that they wanted to stick onto the definition. It will only, only these guns will fire the bullets with this, with this trait attached to it. So persists after death basically just means when the projectile dies, the bullet stays there until it dies for, for its own reasons. And I'm pretty sure you can actually access Sidewinder from this. It just comes from a hunter or something stupid like that. I don't know why, it just does. It also can't Sidewind, so it's basically just a weird missile. Alright. Yeah, no, it doesn't do the wiggle. Whatever, you get the idea. Uh, let's see, there's... I'll talk about controllers in, a, in another episode. There's the turn with speed thing on swarmer hives. AI, I'll talk about that in another episode as well. Uh, I think that's about it, really. So... I guess I'll see you in the next episode then. Uh, bye.